Okay, so just to recap on part two, we've created the the top section, so for the header, the logo, and for the menu. So we now, to, now need to populate the, the logo and the menu items. So to do this, we go into the, the logo div, and if we now create the following code, so we're going to use a h1 tag, <clears throat> and we're going to call it product layout. And then next to that, so we're going to create a h2 tag, and we're going to call it a tiny business solution. Okay, so now we need to style the two tags, the h1 tag and the h2 tag. So if we just save the master page, control S, and go back over to the style sheet. And what I like to do, I like to break up my style sheet so I know which bits are what. So what I normally do is create comments in, in the style sheet as well. So typography. And then what we're going to do, we're going to create a h1 style. Okay, so in this style, we're going to use the, the following. So we're going to put padding top of 30 pixels. We're going to give the, the, the text a color. So that color will be 70767D. And we're also going to give it a font size. And that font size will be 22 pixels. And we're also going to float this to, to the left. And we're going to give it a font weight, which basically means taking the bold off. Oop. I'm going to take the bold off the H1 tag and give it normal. Okay, if we go back over to our master page and check out the, the design view, as you can see, that's been styled, but this H2 hasn't been styled yet. So if we head back over to our style sheet, and what we can do, we'll create the, the next style, so H2. And for this, we are going to have a padding of 25 pixels. Color is going to be a slightly different, a slightly lighter color for this. So it will be 9FA 8B2. A font size of 10 pixels. A font weight it's going to be normal again to remove the bold. And we're going to give it the, the H2 tag width of 140 pi. And we're going to float left. If we go back to our master page, okay, so we need to change the padding slightly. You can see that the text has changed, it's smaller, it's a different colour. Okay, so we'll change the padding. If we remove that, so it just says padding. The first one will be top, so that's going to change to 40 pixels. The next one is right, so we want 0 pixels. Bottom, 0 pixels, and 15 for the left. Save the style sheet, go back to the master page. As you can see now, that's in line, and it's starting to resemble what our layout looks like. If we just go back to the Photoshop PSD, you'll notice that this the layout text is actually bold and this one isn't, so we can we can change that. So if we go back to Visual Web Developer, and if we go to the source of the master page, and just for the layout, we'll wrap that in a tag called strong. And we'll close that out. Okay, so now we've added the strong tag to the layout that'll make that bold. So if we now preview this in the browser. And as you can see, that's now bold. 
but we do have a, a problem here. This white one pixel border should be over here. So to fix that problem, if we come out of this, stop debugging, go to our style sheet. So as you remember on the logo, we floated that to the left. We also need to float the menu to the left. So if we add float left, and then preview the browser again. And as you can see now, it has moved and it's moved over to here, right next to the, the darker one pixel border. So we're starting to, to take a bit of shape now. So the next thing we need to do, we need to add in the menu items to over here. So if we come out of this, stop debugging. So to save a bit of time, I'm going to copy and paste in the menu um, from my notes over here. So the menu is going to look like this. I'll explain what it is. Okay, so this is how you create menu lists. So you use a UL tag, an unordered list. Um, and inside the unordered list, you have list items. So home, customer, login, support, services, and contacts. Then inside of the list item, you actually have the link that takes you to the relevant page. So now we've got the, the markup over here. We need to add the, the styles into the style sheet for it. So if we just go to design view, first of all, just to show what that looks like. And this is what you get. Now, obviously, that doesn't look very nice. And we've also got these little dots on each list item. So with CSS, we can manipulate that. So if we move over to the style sheet, if we create a bit of space. And again, I'm going to copy and paste the code to save time. paste in this. So the way this works is it's the, the menu div we're targeting and we're specifically targeting the unordered list tag. So what we're telling it to do is give it a width of 520 pixels, a height of 20 and give it some margin. So top, right, bottom and left. The easiest way to remember that is just think of a clock. So 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Next we're going to target the list items themselves so we want to have them lining up one right next to each other so we float them to the left and again we've added some margins and then this list style will remove the actual dots off each of the list items and then this one here we're targeting the menu the unordered list the list item that's the actual links now we're targeting so we're saying font size of 12 uh, display block text decoration learn that removes the underline and then that gives it the color so if we save that go back over to our master page and as you can see now the the links have completely changed and it's starting to resemble our Photoshop PSD okay one thing we need to check we need to work on is the the fonts where it says product layout it does not the the Vedana font that's in our Photoshop PSD so to change that, it's that easy. To manipulate the text for all of the sites, we're going to add it to the, the body selector. And we're going to call it font family. And we're going to call it Vedana, which is the font. Save the page. Go back to our master page. And you can now see the, the text has now all changed. OK, so if we go back to the master page, we're looking pretty good now. I think the next section we need to work on is the like the billboard area. So if we go back to our Photoshop document, zoom out a little bit. So the next area we need to work on is actually this background here. So obviously that's a gradient, so we're going to have to use an image for this. So the best way to achieve this is if you grab the crop tool zoom in a little, little bit and if we grab a section and just zoom in okay so we want to grab it just below the the two one pixel lines so it comes all the way down so just above the two pixel lines there we can bring it in slightly if we double click that will make a selection and that's the the background that we need so you do file save for the web and devices click on save and save it into the structure folder that we created earlier on I'm not going to do it because I've already, I've already done that ahead of time so if I just undo that 
So what we need to do now is we need to create the div to hold that image. So if we go to our source, so now we're actually coming out of the header wrapper now to create a brand new div. So we call this ID, we'll call it billboard, close out the div. In fact, we'll call it billboard wrapper. And then if we just grab a comment, just rename that. And if we enter a couple of lines, okay, so now we need to style this, the billboard wrapper ID. So if we come back to our style sheet, and we'll create an ID. So first of all, we need to give it a width. So it's going to be 100% of the screen again. So width, 100%. And the height is going to be 367 pixels. So what we have to do, we have to add that background image in. So we select background and then we type in the following URL bracket dot dot images structure and then whatever you called the image yourself I called mine billboard bg dot jpeg close out the bracket if we just save that and then go back to our master page and go to design view you can see the divs there now but we don't see an image just yet so what we're going to do we're going to use that thin sliver of an image and we're going to repeat it along the width of the, the div so the code we need for that will be background repeat and we want to repeat it across the x axis Okay, so let's just see if that's now repeated it across the width of the, the, the div. And it has. So as you can see, we use that thin sliver, and if we've now just repeated it all the way along. So if we now preview this in a browser. As you can see, we're starting to get there now. In fact, one thing we have missed, we just need to put the the top border on the, on the billboard so if we come out of this and do stop debugging so what we need to add we need to add border top and it's going to be a color of white one two three four it's going to be a solid color and it's going to be one pixel so if we now preview that in the browser again and as you can see, it's added that line and just made it a bit sharper and a bit crisper. Okay, so that's the end of this part three. I'll be making part four and I'll upload that soon.